Again, talking about the confusing terms, so we have the aileron roll, the barrel roll, the snap roll, and the slow roll. Again, the confusing part in aerobatic competition is that the Bob Hoover Smooth 1G aileron roll doesn't exist in competition, and neither does the barrel roll. But the snap roll and the slow roll do, and the confusing thing that we do in competition is that what's called the aileron roll is really the slow roll. One of the other things that's a little bit confusing in the training uh, regime is that people will call the aileron roll something that is actually the zero-g roll. And so, uh, but these, the zero-g aileron roll and the one-g aileron roll, you start with the pitch up first and you stay coordinated. In both cases, they are coordinated maneuvers and so the ball should stay in the center the whole time. If you look at the video of Bob Hoover, uh, pouring iced tea while he's upside down, you not only notice that he maintains 1G on the airplane so the iced tea stays in the glass, if you look at the video again, underneath the drink platform there's a long string with a white ball and Bob Hoover stays so coordinated that he does not let that ball hardly move side to side. So that's one of the uh, judging criteria that you can use to decide if this is an aileron roll or not, is that aileron rolls, whether they're 0G, sometimes called the primary roll, or 1G, like Bob Hoover does it, but they are coordinated maneuvers. The slow roll, on the other hand, is not coordinated, and I'm going to show you that uh, here in just a second. So when I mean aileron roll, I'm talking about something where you pitch up first, and then as you're rolling, you stay coordinated all the way around. I will tend to call this the Bob Hoover roll because he not only stays coordinated, he tends to fly at 1G, so he could be pouring iced tea and the iced tea while he's rolling around and the iced tea stays in the glass. So those people that do the zero G version of the aileron roll, um, they still are doing the, f the same thing, whereas they're pitching first before the roll has begun. Okay, you'll, you'll tend to pitch, pause, so now you're back at one G or zero G, and then you begin your roll and you put in coordinated rudder. In the case of the zero G aileron roll, you don't need any rudder because the wing is at a zero angle of attack. If you're doing the 1G roll, you will need some coordinated rudder. In the case of the decathlon, I noticed that it takes about one-third of rudder when you're going to the left and about half rudder going right at the normal entry speed of, say, 130, 140. Okay? So, but again, 0G, you don't need any rudder at all. So, um, compare this, which is a coordinated maneuver. So this is a nice ride for a passenger because the ball is in the center all the way around. Advance. This is the slow roll, and you are not coordinated throughout this maneuver. Now, the judging standard is center of gravity track. While you're not only in upright flight, but in knife edge flight, inverted flight, back to your second knife edge, through your inverted, also between the two knife edges, and then back to upright flight at the finish. Okay? So you see in the representation here of a decathlon that as you get into knife edge flight, you need to step on top rudder so that as the airplane is going horizontally that your center of gravity dot tracks this horizontal line. And then as you get into inverted flight, you look how high you have to have the nose up so that the lift that you're creating with the, top of the, with the bottom of the wing now, that you have the angle of attack necessary so that the airplane has enough lift created from the bottom to maintain level flight. And then as you go to the other, to the second knife edge, now you're switching your feet to the other top rudder. Okay? And then as you're rolling back around, you're finishing back in the, the level attitude that you need to maintain level flight. Uh, Alan Cassidy, the British aerobatic champion in his book, Better Aerobatics, has come up with a term called the sacred circle. And uh, that is what is drawn by the tip of the nose. And this is the... Here's the instrument panel uh, at, the, at the beginning, and as we're making a left turn, at the left roll, we're rolling continuously around. So we're going to uh, compare this to a clock. And so as we start here, we're at the six o'clock position. As we roll left, the airplane will come uh, counterclockwise up to the three o'clock position, over to the 12 o'clock position, back to nine o'clock, and then finish back at six o'clock. So what we're going to do here is that as you are rolling left, you're going to be making a circle with the tip of the nose around some uh, landmark, 
out on the horizon and try to draw that sacred circle around. Because what's happening is, is that your eye height is not centered on the uh, tip of the propeller. Your eye line is above the propeller, and that is why it seems like the tip of the nose is drawing a circle around whatever you're looking at on the horizon, okay? Represented by this tree. Okay, so as you're rolling from here, so you got you start with a coordinated roll, which is so a left stick and left rudder, until you get to about 45 degrees of bank. Now at this point, you're uh, still you still have your left stick in because you want to keep rolling left, but now you need to switch your feet from your left rudder to your right rudder as you approach what we call knife edge flight. So at this point, you need to hold the nose high enough to maintain altitude while you're in knife edge flight. Now also think about what you're doing with your pitch because in level flight, you have a little bit of back pressure to keep the nose from dropping toward the horizon. But as you get to here, if you have any pull on the stick, it's going to pull you across the horizon, isn't it? So now you need to ease off the stick to where you're basically neutral. The wing needs to be at a zero angle of attack or else it'll pull you across the horizon. Uh, so at this point, your lift is created by your fuselage. And by giving the fuselage a positive angle of attack to the, uh, actually, let me do it this way. By giving the fuselage, which is your airfoil shape, a positive angle of attack to the oncoming relative wind, now the lift is created here, and that's going to hold you up against gravity while your wing is not doing any good for you now because it's in perfect knife edge flight. So it's not opposing gravity in any way, shape, or form. So it needs to be in zero. So at this point, so you're going from back stick to a neutral, and then here you need to push enough to where you're at uh, a high enough nose attitude to hold level flight. So now you're at minus one G, the blood is rushing to your head and it's quite uncomfortable. Over here, since you're stepping on top rudder, you're gonna be falling to the uh, low side of the airplane. Okay, so the ball will definitely not be in the center. Same thing when you're on the other knife edge, now you need to switch feet and step on the other top rudder or the sky rudder to maintain your altitude. So this is definitely not a coordinated maneuver. It's not fun for a passenger, but this is how you perform the slow roll segment. And the other thing too is that here's a little trick. A lot of people, what they'll do is that uh, when they finish, when they're trying to finish the roll, the airplane will tend to drop toward the, the ground, even though they're stepping on a lot of top rudder and it will tend to finish off heading to the right every time. And that's because they're not rounding out this portion of the uh, sacred circle. And, uh, and it's a very frustrating thing, but if, if you will, when you get here, don't switch your feet at the 12 o'clock position. Let the airplane go down to about 1030 to when you switch your feet from this rudder to this rudder, you know, whichever one's pointing at the sky. So wait till that point. And then right about here, just a little bit of a push out will, and again, if you need, you need to push towards your feet at this point, because that's where you want the nose to go, right? And that will round out this portion of the circle. And if, if this portion is as round as the, this portion here, then when you finish, you'll be back on your original heading. So we want to make sure that we uh, keep focused uh, over the nose five to 10 miles away on a spot and we're going to draw the sacred circle around that spot with the tip of our nose. This one's kind of fast and is not going to, didn't require a lot of rudder orientation. Okay. Opposite direction, again, kind of fast, not requiring a lot of rudder, more ballistic, but we're staying at the same altitude. Right. And actually, when you start learning these, you want to try to do them really slow. This is a little slower. Like that. And you see the nose is coming up and how the top of the cowling is describing your so-called sacred circle. This will be around the opposite direction. Again, the nose comes up. You can't see my feet moving, but I'm adding top rudder during the knife edge. Okay, next is going to be the loop. So back to safety turns. Make sure you clear the area before you do each of your maneuvers. Oh, another slow roll. Oh, it's another slow roll. Okay. Notice that it maintained that heading all the way around. And altitude. Well, within 100 feet or so, I dropped there 100 feet. 
Yeah, most people when they lose altitude, they will tend to do it uh, in the inverted portion and in the second knife edge.